Greetings, and welcome back to episode 8 of Exo Plays Spyro 4. After all, this is canonically the fourth game in the series. And uh, speaking of which, I should probably talk more about Reignited Trilogy. I don't know, I guess they they final at the time of recording, they had just released like uh, some footage of Idle Springs from Spyro 2. And they did the formal reveal of Ripto's character model uh, that they're going to be using. Uh, so th this is this is news by about a week at the time of recording right now. So, and yeah, the four men look pretty weird, but you know, I'm still pretty I'm still pretty amped up for Reignited Trilogy. I think it's looking pretty good. Um, after oh, and I guess another thing I should update on because I know Rashid will be interested in this. Rashid Rodriguez. Uh, who is a viewer of mine. Let's talk to this guy real quick. Thanks for the help, Spyro. Here's a dragonfly for you. <laughs> hey, it's Rick! I'm Dragonfly Rick! You caught me, Morty. Now we're gonna have to go to the next dimension, Morty. Uh, look at me. I'm Dan Harmon and Justin Roiland writing a script. We'll put Rick and Morty after every line. Uh, that won't get annoying, and it won't. You know what? To be fair, though, it is it is kind of funny that they don't that they do that and they don't care. Uh, but we're gonna be skipping that portal because there's nothing there. Um, yeah, so we're gonna be heading this way. There's a second level to this building, so we're gonna be dropping by that quickly. And I think we're actually going to do the minigame portals right away, because they're kind of both right next to each other and at the end of this level anyway. Uh, so down there is the start of the level, and that's the only way that we're going to be getting to one of the minigame portals. So we'll do that. Uh, so yeah, I know that there's been some controversy about some of the character designs, I guess. I know that Ripto was something that, like, by the way, best dragonfly location ever! Just sitting there in the corner. This is this is like Mega Man X6, uh, where you have to, where you have where you have to like go left upon spawning into a room, and then that's and then then like the heart piece and the armor tank thing are just like right next to each other. Uh, but regardless, then there's another dragonfly. They're just handing them out like candy, aren't they? Like this, like that one that we found in the corner. That's Goose from Top Gun. Uh, like, you could tell with some of these dragonfly locations that they were just added in to pad the game out to 90 dragonflies, you know, because the game wasn't finished. By the way, uh, another, another lovely crack seam in the geometry. Because it's like, it's like, come on. I'm willing, I'm willing to forgive some of the incompetence in this game to some extent, but it's just like, come on. You didn't have time to fix that. Alright, we're gonna go this way real quick. And by the way, note that there is no hole or blackness or anything there, just an empty hallway. And somehow Spyro has arrived in a black void, so I don't know how that happened. But yeah, I know that Rashid was asking me if I was going to talk about this, and uh... Uh, Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy is something that I have been complaining about pretty consistently in these series. The Puppy Palace is under attack! Please, save us from the battleships! I thought that was the guy f next to the entrance to the level. Like, he has the same name, but he sounds different. Defend the Puffy Palace? Yeah, so... This is interesting. This is actually kind of reminds me, speaking of Crash Bandicoot, this... This reminds me a lot of, um... God, if I can remember it, can I remember how to play this? Like, it makes a... Like that, n those noises are just irritating. I do have to. Okay, I'm I'm dying like a mofo, so I, I'm gonna have to avoid using that. So what you have to do in this this mini game is there are these four giant battleships. This is literally the plain gameplay from Crash Three. Uh, I mean, it controls fairly similarly. It has like the same objective. The only thing it's really missing are the crates. Speaking of crates. Oh no, the Puffy Palace was destroyed! Those airships managed to destroy the palace. Have to act faster next time. Defend the Puffy Palace? 
Like, the Puffy Palace is already destroyed, but I guess we get a second chance. Uh, cause that makes sense. Usually what would happen if something like that had happened in the first three games is it would do like a little time loop thing. Just go back to the way it was before you started the minigame. So I, I guess the only real thing you can really do is mash the A and X buttons together and hope for the best, cause... I'm having, I'm having difficulties aiming at people, and I don't even think they shoot at you. The enemies don't shoot at you. And that, that little timer at the top is actually your health bar, so I wouldn't get, you know, too... Yeah. Uh, but this is literally the same as the, yeah. And speaking of Crash, uh, Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy is a game that I have been complaining about pretty consistently since the, uh... Oh, this, this makes it a lot easier to turn and shoot at people, okay. I don't, I don't exactly play this all the time, so you, you'll forgive me if I forgot about some things. Man, are one of these airships gonna die or what? I don't even know where those bed ships are coming from. Alright, um... But, yeah, Insane Shoji I've been complaining about pretty consistently since it came out, just because, you know... I, I found it kind of disappointing at launch. The load times were terrible. Everybody's talked about the capsule-shaped hitboxes and the collision detection and all that good stuff. And I, in particular, have not been a big fan of how they handled Crash 1 because that's where the, the collision detection issues were the most prominent, from my experience. Basically, I felt like the game wasn't finished at launch or was not where it really should have been, uh, even, even as a budget title remaster, so... Uh, and so what's nice is that recently the game got a few patches since it just became multi-plat. Puffy Palace is safe once again. This dragonfly was taking shelter inside the palace. Here, you can have it. Neat-o. Uh, but oh yeah, I wasn't a big fan of how that, how that collection turned out, but recently the game just got ported to Switch and it's Xbox. Yeah, shut up. I don't care what that guy has to say. I'm talking, Pudgy. Um, but, uh, Enter the Dragonfly, Spyro... What the hell am I talking about? Oh, Christ! Ooh. Ooh. Okay, um, so... Uh, Ent Crash Insane Trilogy just got ported to Switch and Xbox. And to accompany it, there was a patch. And apparently there were a few other patches that came up before that. Uh, and I, I heard from someone that the third patch they released... Okay, I don't think that's supposed to happen. Alright, fixed it. Uh, is, uh, one of the things that they patched, starting with the... What the f... What the hell just happened? The closing detection just went AWOL. I think, okay, now, now everything seems to be fine now, uh, is the third patch, basically it seems like it made the collision detection a little bit more forgiving, either in terms of the hitbox or the environments or what have you. And uh, and then the fourth patch that they just released, for, this is all for the PS4 original version that came out to begin with. Uh, they, they fixed, basically what happened is they, they fixed the collision detection, or made it a lot more generous than it used to be. And they drastically improved the load times. Like, so much so that it really gets your head scratching as to why they were so bad on PS4 to begin with. Like, I guess enough people complained about it on PS4 that they decided to m improve it uh, for the multi-plat versions and patch it into the PS4 version. And it's like a drastic difference in load times, by the way. It like it used to be like you'd have to wait like 30 seconds for a level to load or for the world map to load. And now you play it now and it takes like a second. So yeah, like I said, it really gets you wondering what would we what did we wait for all this time? Like why did we have to wait a year to get this to get that improvement? Why wasn't it like that at launch? And, like, why didn't we get a patch for that way earlier? But, I don't know, it's just like... I don't know, I got what I wanted, so I guess I can't complain too much, but still. Uh, so, 
yeah, so now the load times in, Spyro, in uh, Crash Insane Trilogy are way better. The physics are way better, and I myself, I just replayed Crash 1 on it, and uh, yeah, I actually got all the gems and stuff, and uh, saw the secret ending where Coco, or Crash and Tana ride off that stupid bird-looking thing. It's a pretty shitty ending for all the work I had to put into it, but that's beside the point. Is that, and yeah, so now I'd actually say that Crash 1 and the Insane Trilogy is probably... This is the version to go with. Do not play the original. Go play the insane version instead. And that feels so weird to say. I like how he keeps having to give you the same hints over and over again. Oh well, so we start with the rings. And uh, yeah, so Crash Insane Trilogy as of right now is in is a much better deal in terms of uh, a way to play the original Crash Trilogy than it used to be. Like, the, the version at launch was pretty bad, I must say. At the very least disappointing and not where it should have been. Uh, now, it's probably in terms of like bang for your buck, in terms of... And you know what, one thing I do have to say is that I feel like people really undervalue the new graphics in those games. Like, people are like, why would I want to spend $40 for the new version if I can get the original trilogy for like $15? Which is, you know, a legitimate point, but it seems like people don't really... It seems like people aren't... Like, I think the new graphics are actually really good in Insane Trilogy. Like, the animations especially are look way better than the original animations, which were impressive back then. Nowadays, it's just kind of like, eh. But, like, it's so cartoony and stretchy. It, you know, like, you get squash and stretch and all that good stuff. So, I actually think the new animations especially turned out really good in Insane Trilogy. Um, and I feel like not enough people are giving credit to that. Like, uh, you know, you know who you are. You're watching this playthrough. Keep saying that, you know, higher resolution fidelity doesn't equal better graphics, which is true. But I feel like you're not getting enough, giving enough credit to the new graphics. I think they, I think that those are very well done for this generation. Because, I don't know, we don't exactly have a lot of super cartoony games out on the PS4 generation to compare it to, so, you know. So I, th I think they did a really good job with the graphics in the Insane Trilogy, in both terms of the art design and, you know. Well, Sparks found Dragonfly, would you imagine that? I like how they keep finding brand new excuses for, you know, where the dragonflies come from when you win things. I don't want to play this again. It's just like, come on. They tricked me. They tricked me, I tell you. I would not have pressed the button again if it wasn't for that. I like how, for some reason, the yes and no are, like, really far apart in that one screen. Alright. Alright, come on, Sparks, my boy. <laughs> okay, so now we have the second racing section uh, out of all of these speedway levels, and once again, uh, these l races, I find, are much more demanding than the ones in Spyro 3. Uh, so you do need to go through all of the blue star rings and all of the red, you know, you, you basically, you gotta use every trick at your disposal or you're gonna lose this thing, so. That includes this. Like, see, look at how far ahead we just got from, um, from that guy. Which 
can be kind of annoying if, uh, you know, it's kind of hard if you don't know where the, the actual course rings are, you know. Uh, but it's, you know, it's, it's like... Because the difference between this game and Spiral 3 is that in Spiral 3, um, if you lost the minigame enough times, uh, it would automatically go to an easy mode. Uh, that's not in Inch the Dragonfly, as far as I know. They didn't have enough time to implement that, or they just didn't want to, or I don't know. Uh, so, what you see is what you get. You gotta beat what you gotta beat. And, you know, personally, I don't really... You know, as, as interesting as it was to have uh, an automatically adjusting difficulty in Spiral 3, it was kind of insulting to be like, you know, ha have the equivalent of the Nintendo Super Guide forced upon you for failing too many times. Because it's just like, uh, I'd almost beaten Harbor Speedway, but I lost like twice, so it went to the easy version. Which was kind of annoying, because it's just like, if they had let me try one more time in that hard version, I would have been able to do it, but, you know. And, uh, yeah, like I said, um, just because you pass a guy does not mean that you're gonna move up a place. And the reason for that is the other guys fall so far behind that you lap them multiple times. So it's like, which is really confusing and annoying, I must say. Uh, when I'm trying to play this race and get in first place, and I keep passing the same people over and over again, so... I don't know why they thought that was a good idea, but that is something that happened. And for some reason, even though I've flamed this guy multiple times, he won't fuck off. Alright, so we're in second place. I'm gonna guess that that guy right in front of us is probably in first place. Uh, and by the way, that corner is a little tight, so... Yeah, and judging by it, how f far he's ahead of me. Yeah, we're in four, first place, so it's just... You can see it took them until, like, right at the end of the race uh, for us to get into first place and finish. So you have barely enough time. So if you missed one of those blue star rings, you're fucked. Uh, so make sure you don't do it. By the way... And by the way, um, we'll talk more about the reason uh, for the... Uh, the... <laughs> Hey, it's Grayson. <laughs> For some reason, they forgot to put in. Hope I hope the person who's watching got that message. <laughs> yeah, but I thought I thought I think Crash Insane Trilogy is a much better way to experience the trilogy than it was a year ago. Which is, you know, problematic because the game should have been better at launch, but you know what? I'll take what I can get. If uh and you know what, especially at this point now that the game's available, a multi-plat stuff, like, there's no better time to grab it than now. Uh, so make sure to go check. It's on PC, too, so if you want to play it in 60 FPS, you can do that now. I'm pretty sure these should be done this level, as uh, Clement would say. Yeah, we're all set. So I'm going to go ahead and warp us back to the Dragon Realms, because, you know, again, we have the warp feature. It's my, it's my favorite cutscene of all time. Blasted! Where are they? Where are my dragonflies? <laughs> Excuse me, oh short one. Uh, sir, <laughs> sir, short one. Something went wrong with your scepter. Uh, I think the dragonflies were scattered all over. Scattered! Scattered! Oh! Something must have gone wrong with my scepter. The dragonflies must be scattered all over the continent. No matter. Without their dragonflies, the dragons are helpless. <laughs> 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 I'll send my Riptox out to collect them all and put that purple dragon out to pasture.
That is the greatest cutscene in video game history. Like, holy shit. That was so amazing. I can't believe it. Like, just every, every delivery, every line was wrong. And I, I can't get enough. Every time I play this cutscene, not only is it a surprise to see it again every single time, because it's prefaced by nothing, uh, but then it happens, and it's just, it's just super joyous. I love that cutscene. It's just like the animation is wrong, the delivery is wrong, everything about it is wrong, and I love it. Pyro, the magic of this sacred rune will bestow upon you the power of ice breath. I think that's Tom Kenny, but I'm not sure. He's kind of he's kind of doing a voice, I guess. So now we have the la very last one, uh, Ice Breath. Ice Breath works exactly the same as it did, and <sighs> at least I would think it would, but I guess not. Uh, like, what Ice Breath did in Spyro 2 and Spyro 3, in Spyro 2 it was a power-up gate, in Spyro 3 it was like, for one level only, you got to use it, and it just replaced your Fire Breath. Uh, and what that did was it allowed you to freeze enemies and stand on them as platforms, and freeze uh, those, those creepy Tom Kenny penguins as well. Hello there. I'm the penguins from Frozen Altars. I talk really, I talk, I sprained my flipper during training. They mind taking my place. I think you could freeze. No, you can't freeze the Dragon Elder. That would be ironic, wouldn't it? But I guess the Dragon Elder's gone, so we can't do anything with him. Anyway, uh, we're over time. I'll see you guys in episode 9.